So what we have here is we have a system of the form mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equals some f of t, okay, where this f of t is a driving, driving force. Before we had zero, there was nothing driving the system. The only thing that was causing the system to move is what we did initially, initial displacement and velocity, okay. Now we have this thing driving the system. In our particular case, we have m omega squared, m e omega squared r cosine omega t, okay. But, you know, more generally, let's consider something of the form just f0 cosine omega t, okay. So we're going to look at, so cosine is a, you know, sinusoidally varying function. So that's what I meant early on by when I said we're going to look at special types of driving forces that vary harmonically in time, right? Okay. So we so we're interested in m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equals f zero cosine omega t, and we want to see if we can solve this differential equation, right? Before we solved it with zero right hand side. Now we ask if we can solve it um, with some non-zero right hand side, right? Particularly a uh, harmonically varying right hand side. Okay. So before we set out to do this, let's uh, do a little experiment. Okay. So here I have a little little experiment of this exact system. Okay. So I have um, so I have. Uh, this this uh, one one story building with this motor sitting on top, so I'll exaggerate it, size and, and and things like that, right? And and here is a little knob I can turn to ch to change the angular velocity of the motor, right? So um, this is zero cycles per second, and this is four cycles per second. Okay, so let's start this experiment right now. I'm not I'm not spinning the motor, right? So nothing's happening. Okay, so now I'm going to start spinning it slowly, you know, like that. So it's making about 0 0.13 cycles per second. Okay, so let us um, make some. So initially, as soon as I touched it, you saw that it did some wiggly stuff, and then it settled down to a sinusoidal motion, right? So let's uh, write down some observations. I'm going to just minimize this for a second and go back to this guy, right? So let's make some let's make some observations here. Um, when the when 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 the driving frequency. is 0 0.13 cycles per second okay what is the what is the response you know when I said it that so there's some initial um, initial um, um, you know initial what what shall we call it initial some wiggly motion right? Am I spelling that right? Okay. That's okay. Right. Um, and then settles to a sinusoidal motion. Okay. And if, if we go back and look at what that sinusoidal motion is, the frequency of that sinusoidal motion seems to be the same as the driving frequency, right? The, the the so the top the, this picture is the oh boy I mean to do that right so this picture here is the is a plot of the force and this picture is the displacement and you see that the displacement seems to have the same makes they make the same number of cycles as the force okay and you also see that the the peak of the force seems to coincide with the peak of the displacement right so so if we let's let's add those. Let's add those to our observations. Okay, so um, 
same frequency as driving force frequency, okay, and peaks uh, coincide. Okay. So then let's let's. Uh, sorry, I'm switching back and forth between these things, but. So let's go back and let's increase the driving frequency to a little bit more. So again, you see some um, some you know wiggly stuff here, but then it settles down to a to a sinusoid. Okay, and let's increase it furthermore. So again, there's some wiggly stuff. It settles down to a sinusoid, which seems to have the same frequency as the driving force, right? But now you see that, I don't know how clearly you can see it, but you see that this peak is a little bit behind this peak, okay? This peak happens a little bit later than this peak, right? So, so at about 0.7 um, driving frequency, sorry. So at about 0.7 cycles per second. Okay, again there's some initial, initial, you know, wiggly motion. And then um, settles to a sinusoid. Okay, and then the frequency is uh, same as the driving frequency. Okay, and then um, displacement peak lags force peak. Okay, well, sorry, going one more time back. Now let's go and wrap this thing. Then so, you also notice that the, the amplitude of the motion has increased, right, from what it was before. So when I was at, you know, the point one three, the, ampli the, the motion was much smaller than now. So we should really add our add that observation too, you know, uh, back here. So amplitude is higher. Amplitude higher than at you know, 1.3 cycles per second. Okay. So next I'm going to go to one cycle per second, right? And I have to, um, you know, remark that you know omega n for the system is two pi radians per second. Okay. I've, you know, I've designed my system so that it's omega n is two pi radians per second. So. If I just freely let it oscillate, then it's, uh, it'll make one cycle per second. Is that clear? Okay. So now I'm, you know, I'm choosing my driving force to have that exact same frequency. So I'm, I'm driving it at a frequency that's equal to its natural frequency now, right? So I'm going to do that now. So let's do that. Okay, so now the amplitude is really high. Again, there was some initial stuff, but then it settles down to a to a sinusoidal motion. Frequency is the same as driving frequency. But if you look carefully, you know, I mean, it's hard to look. I can, you know, I can, you know, I understand that. But if you look carefully, you will see that the peak of the displacement happens exactly when the force has reached its peak and come back to zero. Okay. That's uh, I, you know that's hard to see, okay? But but you know you should just trust me on that. That you know that the displacement peak occurs when the force peak has reached its when the force has reached its peak and has now come to zero, right? So so going back now, we'll we'll, we'll do this going back and forth a couple of more times. <coughs> 